What's going on, Dodgers Nation? Welcome to the Dodgers Nation post game show. My name is Doug McCain, credential member of Dodgers Media. You can follow me on X and Instagram at DMAC underscore LA. And thanks for rocking with us after the Dodgers lose a wild one at Wrigley in Chicago by a final score of 9 to 7. The Dodgers' new record is 7 to 3. After this one, they have their four game winning streak snapped. And it was a wild game. The Bobby Miller wasn't able to get out of the second inning. You had the Dodgers' bullpen have having to cover 22 of 27 outs. Michael Grove, he gave up three runs. We'll talk about the offense coming through in certain spots, but not coming through in other spots. Max Muncy, 0 for 4, runners in scoring position. You had Teoscar Hernandez and Will Smith really carrying this Dodgers offense. They end up giving seven of the Dodgers 12 hits today. Teoscar Hernandez, he went off once again. So did Will Smith. Another four-hit game for Smitty. Shohei Otani had a double. All also hit his second home run of the season. So, like I said a couple days ago, I said he would get his first home run of the Giants series. Also said he was going to go on a tear, and I think that's what we're seeing with Shohei Otani. But lots to get into on this. We got some concerns so far. I mean, the bottom of the order, you have Gavin Lux going 0 for 4 again. I will say he has been getting some of the worst calls I've seen from any Dodger of recent memory as far as these borderline balls and strikes just not going his way. But at the end of the day, he's had a lot of opportunities to go up there and produce. He just hasn't done it just yet. But we're going to break this entire game down. First thing, though, welcome to the number one Dodgers post game show on YouTube. And also, be sure to let me know where you represent Dodgers Nation from. And also, be sure to comment done so you're eligible for our next giveaway. That I believe it's going to be a Mookie Betts jersey. And that comes at 90,000 subscribers. So, yeah, a wild game, guys. A wild game at Wrigley. You got early baseball. And look, I still, I know the Dodgers lost in this one. I know that it wasn't Bobby Miller's best start, of course. He struggled on his birthday. He goes an inning in two thirds. We'll break it down his start in a second here. But still, the fight and the, relentless, the relentlessness in the effort from this Dodgers team, they just don't give up. They don't give up at bats. Every single pitch matters. The top of the order, they continue to produce. Unfortunately, though, having scored seven runs, you feel good about that. They've scored at least five runs in every single game this season. But today did have some interesting moments when it came to runners in scoring position. The Dodgers go three for 16 with runners in scoring position. Max Muncy, he had multiple opportunities to come three. And you saw late in the game there, you have a 93, 94 mile per hour heater right down the dick, and he just missed it, right? So Max Muncy, he got to come through in those spots. He was kind of missing some pitches. Dodgers go three for 16. Muncy goes 0 for 4 with runners in scoring position. James Outman goes 0 for 4 with runners in in scoring position so there were some opportunities there for some Dodgers hitters and they just weren't able to capitalize with Ducks on the pond but still anytime you put up seven runs you have to feel good about your chances and really this loss falls on really Bobby Miller and Michael Grove and the pitching staff today now let's get into some of these comments here we'll break down this one welcome to the Dodgers Nation post game show let's see you start right up at the top we got Cody on YouTube DMAC you're so on point with S it's scary thanks for with us appreciate that you guys are always on point too go tani that's from mongfa daniel macy win or lose i bleed dodgers blue that's from daniel macy dodgers are not going anywhere lakers too are you kidding me to say that after a couple, 10 games where they're 7-3, and three, the offense has been outstanding. They don't even have their full bullpen with Blake Trying and Bruce Dark Gratterall out. They'll still probably make some additions. I see everyone parroting the Miami Marlins will be sellers taking Jesus Luzardo and Tanner Scott. They're going to make some moves. They're going to add some additions. So, welcome to that party for late on that one. Uh, they stunk to it from Richard Selinger. Grove needs to get off the team. Miller will be fine. Look, we'll talk about Michael Grove in a second here. I will say that, yeah, it's unfortunate. I mean, he really hasn't been optimized, I don't think, as much as you would hope. But let's not forget, the only reason why Michael Grove is in there, he's got options, he's got flexibility, and also you got injuries to this Dodgers bullpen. I mean, 
I think you optioned Kyle Hurt a few days ago. I'm not so sure that was the move. I posted on Twitter the Wolverine meme where you're looking sad in the frame, and I said Kyle Hurt because I would much rather see Kyle Hurt on this team in this bullpen than Michael Grove, and I think that's for obvious reasons. Look, Michael Grove, he's just too inconsistent, and you're seeing way too many non-competitive pitches out there, and when he got his opportunity, we'll, we'll jump to that there in the bottom of the sixth inning. You saw the leadoff walk. I mean, it's a six to five game, six to get five game that point, and he it's a leadoff walk on four pitches to Horner. Okay, this is Major League Baseball. You're a bullpen piece. That's unacceptable. And you follow that up. It's magical. He gets the fly out for the first out, and then. Gomes single to right, so that gave the Cubs runners on first and third. And then Gomes, he's able to advance to second on a wild pitch by Grove. He just spikes that pitch, that breaking ball right there. And then next pitch, 2-2 count. It's a cutter, caught too much of the plate, and Hap's able to triple to center. Two runs scored. That gave the Cubs an 8-6 to six lead. And then next batter, Suzuki. Say a Suzuki, 1-1 one, one count, a slider top of the zone that was left a little two over the plate, and he's able to get a sack fly to right. That made it 9-5. to five. So he ends up striking out Bellinger on a nice little sinker bottom of the zone, but still three runs on two hits, and it just became an insurmountable lead because of Michael Grove in that inning. It all starts with the leadoff walk with no outs on four pitches. Hey, that means you didn't show up, man. That means you didn't come to play. Let's just be honest, right? You can't have that in Major League Baseball and trust that on a World Series caliber bullpen. You just can't have that. But uh, Justin Lombard has enter Grove slander. Look, I'm not going to be one of those people, oh, it's Grover or this and that. No, look, he is someone that's capable. He really is. He has a fastball 95, 96, can touch 97. He has a respectable breaking ball. He's implemented that cutter that he uses against lefties, the curveball, but he just doesn't, hasn't just put it all together. He needs to just take a deep breath and put it all together, go pitch by pitch and execute, and then he can make some of himself. He has the talent to do it. Uh, we got, uh, y'all, wait, there's uh, audio problems here? Let's see here. D, 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 what's up? Bum, bum. Let's see here, making sure everything is correct. Hello, 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 hello. I see some people saying there's audio problems. Give me a thumbs up to make sure there are not. One bad game and they're still the worst person. Baseball, audio is good. That's from Jazz Rod. Okay, that's probably their issue then. What up, Cody, over there? So, yeah, you look at... I can hear you. Okay, awesome. Good stuff, good stuff. Justin Lamas, Outman needs to... Outman needs to be consistent. Strikeout king since he's been in baseball. Wake up, people. Deep Fried Bean says Grove was bad last game, too. I'm not a full doomer, but there's a lot more than just this game. Yeah, I mean, look, it's funny that everyone and say, Michael Grove, Michael Grove, Michael Grove. Really, I mean, that to me is you're looking past the problem. I mean, not that Bobby Miller is a problem or anything like that, but this game specifically, <laughs> it's on the guy who goes, it's on the starting pitch that goes an inning and two thirds. So let's really start back and rewind to Bobby Miller's first inning. Because first inning for Bobby Miller, he looked like he was headed for the National League Cy Young. He looked like he was going to put himself in a position on his birthday on a homecoming game, really to have a career day, goes out there, strikes out Hap with a change up top of the zone. Then he strikes out Suzuki with a slider on the inside corner. And then he punches out Bellinger, challenges him with a 98 mile per hour fastball up and away in the zone. And then you're starting to see the dominance working in the zone. And then he was a different pitcher there in the bottom of the second inning. He gets Morrell to ground to short for the first out and then falls behind Dansby Swanson, 2-0 in the count, leaves a four-seam fastball right down Broadway, and Swanson hammers it for a home run that gave the Chicago Cubs a one to nothing, uh, their first run of lead. So that makes it two to one there. And then Bush, he walks him on seven pitches. Horner, he ends up singling to center on a four seam fastball, left a little up. Madrigal, he singles on a curveball, kind of not the worst pitch in the world, but still, kind of you look at the sequencing there, he goes with a curveball in that spot. And it just felt like. 
during that stretch that he, I don't want to say panicked a little bit, but he was, you saw the walks early on, you saw the balls, and he was just trying to force it in the zone. You never want to do that. You still want to go with your sequencing, hit your spots, because you look at that first inning, goes 15 pitches, second inning, 43 pitches there, right? So you didn't see the swing and miss, forcing the ball in the zone. There was tons of hard contact. They were barreling him up that entire second inning. And for him, it all starts and ends with a with a located fastball, and you just weren't seeing that. And then after Madrigal, like I said, he singled to center. That scored Michael Bush, and that made it 2-2. Two to two. The Cubs tied it up. He gets Gomes to fly out. Then he walks Hap. On eight pitches. You saw that at bat. Missing with the changeup. Missing with the changeup again. Fouls off a sinker. Four seam fastball. He's not able to locate it. And then fouls off a couple of pitches. And then he misses with that four seam fastball again. He was missing arm side. He was missing glove side. And then... Horner scores on a wild pitch that made it three to two Cubs. And then next batter, say a Suzuki, another long at bat, tons of foul balls, not enough swing and miss. And on the ninth pitch of that at bat, four seam fastball, kind of bottom of the zone, left it a little up there. And then Suzuki, he doubled to right. That scored half and Madrigal, and that made it five to two Cubs. And Bobby Miller's day was done. So, yeah, you just did not see the swing and miss. Lots of foul balls, and you look at the hard contact in that inning. I mean, Seiya Suzuki, the double, 106.7 miles per hour off the bat. Would have been a home run in one out of 30 stadiums in Major League Baseball. Would have been a home run at Yankee Stadium. And then you look at just some of the other hard contact in that inning, and it was concerning. And you saw him early in that in the count just trying to make something happen. And fortunately, he just lost it. I mean, look, you're going to see this with young pitchers. Let's not sit here and act like Bobby Miller has made a million starts in his career, right? He's still extremely young. He's still extremely inexperienced. And you're talking about someone who was in his second start this season. Last year, he made 22 starts plus the one start in the postseason. So 23, you're talking about 25 starts at the big league level. I mean, last season pitched 124 to thirds innings and yeah, he's got about 130 plus innings of big league experience. So point I'm trying to make is let's calm down a little bit and kind of pump the brakes on expectations for Bobby Miller and kind of give him this opportunity to grow and learn from this. It was a learning experience for Bobby Miller. But like I said, I mean, the hard contact in that inning was just a little too high. I mean, the Horner single, 103.9 miles per hour off the bat. Dansby Swanson, 106.5 miles per hour off the bat. I mean, he walks Michael Bush. So, look, you're going to see this occasionally. I mean, we just had Clayton Kershaw on Sports Net LA with Joe Davison, Oral Hershiser, and he said when it came to mound presence and just feeling like you were the man out there, it didn't happen until the following season, until a while. It takes a while to truly submit yourself as a big league ace level starter. And I think that you need starts like this for Bobby Miller for him to get to the kind of pitcher that you expect him to be. So we got Gary A. Mama said they'd be days like this. Hey, I found it to be an entertaining ball game. I really did. I mean, the fight and the relentlessness and the effort of this Dodgers offense, and they're not even firing on all cylinders. We'll get to the bottom of that Dodgers lineup because I'm going to tell you a little bit, maybe the Dodgers' best lineup isn't out there yet. Maybe they do have a better option. We got Dodgers. Four young pitchers are questionable at best. Grove really sucks. That's from Jay Ken. Tell us how you really feel. The team needs to send down the weakest links down to the minors. That's from Joseph Garcia. The win probably got to Bobby as well. Boomer Sats. That's a fantastic point because the win was a factor. I mean, it felt like it was Coors Field light today, right? And I always say about Coors Field, when you're at Coors Field, it's like playing bowling with the bumpers on. And it did feel a little like that today but but think about this despite the way this game played right despite the way this game played the Dodgers they still had an opportunity to tie it multiple times late in the game so there are positives to take out of this one but unfortunately it just was not Bobby Miller's best game how about Michael Bush though I mean he makes that final defensive play on a hot shot from James Outman that would have tied the game as a two-run single had an expected batting average close to 600 he hit that ball on the screws and like I said 
would have gone as a two-run single. And, oh, how about Michael Bush? He gets the revenge defensive play. Also homered, hit a home run in this one as well. So, yeah, give him some credit. How about Denelson Lamette, by the way? He relieves – he relieves – uh he relieves Bobby Miller and was able to go out there and get the job done in a little short experience there. And then Denelson Lamette, though, he does give up the home run to Michael Bush on a sinker kind of down in the zone and give Michael Bush credit. Great uh, piece of hitting there. And that put that put the Cubs up 6-2. to two. And at that point, you're thinking, okay, third inning. You already burned your starter. You're looking at a bullpen game. The Dodgers don't have a chance, right? Most teams in Major League Baseball, you don't have a chance in that situation. But the Dodgers lineup is so potent. They're so explosive that it doesn't matter how big the lead is. It is not insurmountable. So the Dodgers were able to fight back. The, the Nelson Lamette, he was able to bounce back, too. Following that home run, he got Horner to line to center, Madrigal single to right, and then he gets Gomes to fly to right. So, yeah, I mean, give Lamette, he's like, it's not like he looks great or anything, but considering the injuries that the Dodgers are dealing with at the moment, he's going out there and he's giving you big league level bullpen relief action, right? I mean, you can't expect a lead from him, but hey, they don't have that many options and give him credit coming off these injuries all these years and just trying to transition to a bullpen style role of a lot of uh, respect for him and then you jump to top of the fifth inning. Dodgers still down 6-2. to two. Mookie Betts he hits a leadoff single and then first pitch Mr. Shohei Otani and Shohei Otani he leaves the yard. Let's check it out. Boom! I love that. He just gets the bat head out there. You see the strength. Just lifts it out of the park. I mean, you see the strength that Shohei Otani has on display right there. And you're talking about a hitter that is just getting started. He had a double in this game early on. And then he is able to get that two-run home run. Just lifts it out again. Boom! A little change up. Middle, middle, bottom of the zone, and you're just wondering, did that get out? It absolutely did. And Otani, just like that, has his second home run. And he's someone who really was the big reason why the Dodgers offense was able to get going today. In the first inning, he hit the one-out double. Freeman walked after that, and then Smith singled to left. That low to the bases. Max Muncy had the opportunity. He strikes out on a changeup, and then Teoscar Hernandez, your favorite player's favorite player, he singled to give the Dodgers two runs. Freeman and Otani scored. So Dodgers got up early 2 nothing, and Otani was a big reason why he hits that home run there in the fifth to make it 4-6, to six, the two-run shot. Then following that, Freddie Freeman, he draws a four-pitch walk. Then Will Smith on a 1-1 count, he doubled to left to give the Dodgers another run. They pull within one to make the score 6-5. to five. And then Smiley comes in, and Smiley was dealing. So this really was the pivotal part of the game, in my opinion, as far as the Dodgers really losing out on a chance to take control earlier. And you had a runner on second. Smith doubled. After he had that RBI double where Freeman scored. You have Will Smith at second. No outs. Smiley comes in. Another opportunity for Max Muncy. He strikes out on a knuckle curve down the way. Chasing out of pitch out of the zone. Teoscar Hernandez, who had himself another really, really awesome afternoon. Going out there and producing. Wasn't able to do it in this at-bat. He strikes out on a knuckle curve. Bottom of the zone. He chases. And that brings up James Outman. A better at-bat. He fouled off a couple knuckle curves. And then on the 1-2, he strikes out on a sinker. And you're just missing a pitch right there. I mean, that the, the, a lot of missed pitches in the zone by the Dodgers today. And James Alman, he misses a sinker right there, middle of the zone, a pitch we've seen him drive. And we saw him at the go-ahead grand slam last season against the Cubs early in the year. And he's unable to take advantage. But Dodgers still get three runs on three hits in that inning. They give new light to this game. They're right back in it. It's 6-5 to five entering the bottom of the fifth inning. How about Alex Vesia. Want to give him shine a little light on Alex Vesia. Vesia, he was able to have a really clean inning there in the bottom of the fifth. Swanson was caught stealing. 
and that was a big one. The catcher to the shortstop situation right there. He gets Bush to fly out. So after he walked Swanson, he was able to take advantage of uh, that throw out there. And then Smiley makes light work of the Dodgers in the sixth. And then Michael Grove, we talked about. He comes in the bottom of the sixth inning, walks Horner. We already broke down that inning. He gives up three runs on two hits there. Then the seventh inning, Dodgers right back in the mix. So Otani, he lines to center. Freeman draws a one-out walk. By the way, that Otani line out to center... That Otani line out to center. I mean, you're talking about one that had a very high expected batting average, one that was from a launch angle stand, standpoint was uh, was right up there that you were hoping for that to be able to do damage. I mean, so I mean, and then the one of the eighth as well. We'll talk about that one in a minute here. But you look at that inning, Otani lines to center, Freeman walks, Smith, he singled to left. And that gave the Dodgers runners on first and second. Then you get the steal, the double steal, or the advance on the wild pitch by Smiley. That set the Dodgers up with runners on second and third. Another opportunity for Max Muncy. 2-2 pitch, strikeout swinging. He strikes out again on a knuckle curve, almost the same place, down and away. So, I mean, Max Muncy, 0 for 4 with runners in scoring position today. Just not his best afternoon. Then Merriweather, he comes in to face Teoscar Hernandez. And on a 1-1 pitch, he singled to left. That scored Freeman and Smith. And that pulled the Dodgers within two to make the score 9-7. to And then with Teoscar... At, at second, after stealing second, James Altman, another guy who goes 0 for 4 with runners in scoring position, he struck out looking. So, not a good day for Muncie, not a good day for Altman, not a good day for Gavin Lux. He jumped to the bottom of the seventh. Grove gave up the hit to Swanson on an infield single, but was able to get out of the inning. Top of the eighth, top of the eighth. Taylor, he draws a walk to start off the inning. Gavin Lux, he strikes out on a slider away on three pitches. Not a good at bat for Gavin Lux. Bet strikes out looking. Taylor, he's able to advance a second on a wild pitch. And then Otani, three two count slider up and in he flies out to center on a ball that had a 110.2 exit velocity a 110.2 exit velocity and you're really thinking to yourself wait a minute this should be a uh i mean like 110.2 exit velocity a 910 a 9-10 expected batting average. So all Otani does is hit the ball hard. I mean, he hates baseballs. Like I said, Anthony Rendon hates baseball. Otani hates baseballs. And then you jump to the ninth inning, and Dodgers, they're right back in the mix, right back in the mix there in the top of the ninth. Freddie Freeman, great at bat, eight pitch at bat. He takes a slider on the inner half and he singles to right. Will Smith, he reached on an infield single to third. Muncie, he flies out to second. And then really it came down to this. Teoscar Hernandez, he grounded to short. Originally, he was ruled safe. That would have loaded the bases. But unfortunately, they reviewed it and he was called out. And then James Outman, he lines to first on a line out that had an expected batting average of almost 600. So Dodgers falls short. It was a competitive game. Now, first big takeaway, Teoscar Hernandez needs to be batting fifth, okay? Like Max Muncy should not be batting uh, ahead of Teoscar Hernandez. Teoscar Hernandez today, he ends up going three for five. Again, four RBI. He's hitting 300 on the year. You guys know I was on the Teoscar train forever, right? I mean, this is the guy I wanted and he's been nothing but great. He's been better than I even expected him to be. He needs to be up in that line. But let me know down below in the comment section, do you agree with me? Should Teoscar Hernandez, your favorite player's favorite player, be batting higher in the order? We got Robert. I think she came out. Oh, uh, we got uh, Mr. Death. Taylor needs to go, dude. Has a .073 average. Taylor needs to go and bring someone else in. Mr. Death, look, he has not got off to a good start, Mr. Chris Taylor, and he definitely needs to up the production. He goes 0 for 3 today, did have a walk. So far in the season, he's down to .071, a 387 OPS. Really hasn't gotten the at-bats, though. I mean, you're talking about someone who has less than 20 at-bats. So I think for Chris Taylor, 
I would not aim the blame on him because of the role he has on this team. Chris Taylor is someone that is the emergency band-aid for so many different positions, whether it be third base, shortstop, could be second, all the outfield positions, right? He's there for that and provides some life off the bench. And he's a streaky player that if he had gone consistent playing time, maybe he'd be in a better position right now. But yeah, he hasn't really had those explosive extra base hits. He hasn't had those signature moments early on. But I think we know we have having Chris Taylor. Let's not forget he's a postseason gamer and he plays a role for this team and that is being a versatile player that you can plug into multiple positions that's durable that when other guys go down you can count on so I'm not concerned about him for me I think more of the concern is Gavin Lux I mean Gavin Lux he goes 0 for 1 with runners in scoring position he had an opportunity to come through like I said he has been getting bad call after bad call from the umps a lot of borderline calls not going his way but still I mean that does not make up for I mean he's got he went over four today and he's hitting 172. He's still trying to make his way back from the injury. I still think it's premature to write him off or anything like that. But he's gone 5 for 29 in eight games played so far. One extra base hit. So one of his five hits has gone for extra bases. Two walks, seven strikeouts. And I think from a timing standpoint, a mechanical standpoint, when he's at the plate, you just don't think that he's going to be doing damage, right? You don't like anticipate that. And I think that you do have to give him time. I'm not saying you got to write him off, but I think that you have to kind of zero in on it and kind of focus on the fact that, look, Mookie has graded out when it comes defensive run save so far as slightly above average at the shortstop position and it's admirable today ball gets hit his way with Swanson and he's unable to make the play on a play that he'll tell you should have made but he wasn't ruled an error right was not ruled an error but I still think if Mikel Rojas hits like he's hitting has two home runs already he's a top four top five defensive shortstop I still think that there is a world where the Dodgers' best lineup and what's best for the Dodgers is Rojas at short, Mookie at second, and then you wait for Willie Adamas to become available. And I would not be surprised if that doesn't happen. I mean, I think Willie Adamas is a player that the Brewers are ultimately going to trade unless they're well out in front in their division. So I just, if, if Lux is not producing at the plate, right, the reason why they want Lux's bat in the lineup is not because they think he's going to hit 20, 30 home runs or give you 20, 30, 40 doubles or anything like that. The reason why Gavin Lux's bat is in the lineup is because of his speed. Because if he gets on base, that sets Mookie and Otani and Freddie up with another duck on the pond that they can drive in. They need him to be on base so he can use his speed and that dynamic that the Dodgers didn't have last season and try to capitalize from it and use it as a run-producing opportunity. But if you can't get on base and you're hitting 172, the on base is low, you're not drawing a ton of walks, you're not getting on base, it, what's the value, right? It makes you wonder, what is the value? So I think you're going to wait for 50 to 100 plate appearance in that bats, but at some point, if that position isn't producing, like I said, I'm here to kind of keep it a buck, keep it 100 and try to say the things other people won't say, right? And I think at that point, you kind of have to make a tough decision as to what is best for this Dodgers team. But what are you guys' thoughts about that? Let me know down below. Bush, I'll drink to that from B. Guzman. I'm going to catch up on all these comments, by the way. Any of your super chats is a guaranteed read. Uh, Mookie can't carry the club. That's from B. Guzman. No one can carry a club for 162 games. Good news about that. <laughs> I mean, Otani had a double, a home run, and another one, the eighth. They had a 9-10 expected batting average that was over 110 off the bat. Uh, Mr. Shohei Otani is going on a tear, I'll tell you that much. Miller sleeping. That's from Robert. If you score seven runs, you got to win that game. Pitching has to be better. No excuses. There you go. To put it bluntly, and when your starter goes an inning and two-thirds, it really puts you behind the eight ball. And the Dodgers give him credit. Not a lot of teams out there have the offense that can get you back into a game, but it was a 6-5 to five game. They were multiple times where you were one swing away 
from tying this one up. Like I said, multiple opportunities for Max Muncy, James Altman. They want to combine 0 for 8 with runners in scoring position. Dodgers 3 for 16 with runners in scoring position today. Paul Hernandez, revenge. Bush should be grateful we traded him. Look at the opportunity he's gotten. Never. Yeah, I think that's a great point from Paul Hernandez over on Facebook is that it really is a win-win. I mean, the Dodgers, they were able to get a prospect in Jackson Ferris that is continuing to emerge, that you don't have to keep on the 40-man roster when there's a roster crunch you can develop someone that could be a contributor for rotation or you can use as a trade chip and that's what the Dodgers were trying to do with Michael Bush in that move they were trying to replenish this farm system because when you're winning like that like the Dodgers win it's designed for you not to have high picks and be able to acquire talent so you have to do it through other methods and that's what they were trying to do and then for Michael Bush he gets the opportunity to be the starting first baseman right that can't happen with the Dodgers right you have a Freddie Freeman right there but Bobby is soon going to slay let the young man settle in I'm really not worried about my about uh, Bobby Miller he really did just lose his command I think with the four seam fastball you want to see him improve on that I think you want to see him too I mean, just kind of looking at his pitch mix today on the breakdown Bobby Miller 53% four seam fastball the velocity was down a little bit the max velocity was 99 he was averaging 98 on his four-seam fastball. The spin isn't crazy on his fastball. He's not a high spin rate four-seam fastball guy. But I do think you might want to see a little more sinker, a little more slider. He only threw four sinkers today, five sliders today. And when I talked to Bobby Miller, that's what he told me was going to be the big difference for him this year. It was implementing that slider to have another pitch that kind of turns left on hitters to kind of keep them off balance so he doesn't have to rely on that curveball change up as much and those really are his best pitches right there the changeup and the curveball but he just did not have them as far as his ability to throw them for strikes the curveball spin was down the changeup was down I think the weather was a little bit of factor today to be honest I mean you're talking about yes the sun was out but below 50 degrees those are great conditions but Bobby Miller is someone that will tell you he should have been better today and look this is birthday turn 25 happy birthday Bobby Miller probably had a lot of family in attendance he's from Illinois or by the way, one summer, Bobby Miller was an ice cream man. He had a job as an ice cream man. So that Bobby Ice nickname definitely works. But hey, DMAC, can the Cubs keep a five-run average like we have all year? Let's go Dodgers, Alfredo, Olivia. Yeah, I mean, look, Dodgers are over six runs. I mean, you look at the runs that they've averaged this year. It, it's pretty incredible, the offensive production. And that's with Otani just starting to get going. That's without the bottom of the lineup being consistent. So you have to factor that in as well and you look at the averages I mean you're averaging just under eight runs per game in their, in their three losses this year their three losses this year for the Dodgers I mean it's pretty remarkable the fight that they put up in games that they haven't won they've only lost three games this year right only lost three games today you lose nine to seven, so you score seven runs. You lost to the Cardinals in a game where you fought back after the the, the issues on Saturday with the rain delay, and you lose six to five. Six to five, so you score five runs in that one. So you look at the uh, the losses and. I mean, you're talking about the the uh, the San Diego game, right? You scored 11 in the second game against the Padres in Seoul, South Korea. So 11, five in seven in losses. So that's 7.6 runs per game in losses. So, I mean, this offense, what more could you ask for? They've gotten the job done. And I think this bullpen, you definitely need to get Bruce Dark Gratterall back at some point towards the middle of May and Blake Trinan. And I think they're going to add a bullpen piece because they always do. Give me Tanner Scott all day, every day from the Florida Marlins. They're going to be sellers. Dodgers still have five plus runs every game. That is from... Uh, Let's read 20 comments in a row. It's from Oopsie. 20 comments. Ready? Uh, the Spectacular 3G. Bring up Pajes. We got Metabolic. Cubs threatened to not authenticate the ball. Okay. Fired take. Moose. Dodgers need to use Hurt over Grove. The Grove experiment needs to be over. ADG. Guy definitely putting the ball on eBay. That's from 4. Uh, we got, uh, that's from ADG. Deep Fried Beans. The Teoscar should bat 4th against lefties. Hey, I asked Dave Roberts that period point blank. I said, should we see Teoscar and Andy? is fourth against lefties and he said look I mean I want to see a middle of the lineup he wasn't willing to commit to that and plus I mean how can you argue with Will Smith he had a four hit game right but I think that absolutely should be batting fifth no less than 
fifth at all times in this lineup. I truly believe that because of the success he's had and the more success he does have against righties, the better year he's going to have. But uh, I think for him, too, it's just about seeing better pitches with more protection around him. But uh, how many consecutive five-plus games can we get? That's from Hops24. Michael McCaffrey says, I wonder if security was tempted. Gangsta, whoever caught, show a second homer like they did on that poor lady in L.A. Embarrassing. Brian Gomez, Muncie, and Outman left them hanging. Too many runners on base. Shout out to Teo. Besides that missed opportunity, he did so well at the plate. Yeah, and then he let the ball get away from him in that inning with Michael Grove, which definitely was really not necessarily his fault. But yeah, I mean, Teoscar Hernandez, he's hitting 300. I mean, he's been absolutely fantastic on the year so far. And I think that he's going to keep it up. I think he's on a mission on a one-year deal to get paid. I think he's just, he's seen the ball really well. He's in a much better lineup where he's getting better pitches to hit. And Teoscar Hernandez, he needs to be batting higher in the lineup. That needs to happen because I think today, it might have been a different situation. I mean, just look at Teoscar Hernandez. Teoscar Hernandez so far in the season, sitting 300 with a 349 on base. He's slugging 650, has a 161 weighted runs created plus. He's hit four home runs, two doubles, has 14 RBI. Okay, strikeout numbers, sure, they're high. On the year, is at 37.2% on his strikeout rate. But still, I mean, he's just gone up there and he's done damage. But uh, more comments. Who's na- who names their kid Teoscar? I like that. I mean, we're, it's like the Academy Awards. The Teoscar goes to the Dodgers. Alex, let's look at the bright side. Otani is hitting homers now. Betts, Teoscar, and Smith are crushing the ball. Kershaw, Bueller, and May will be back at some point in the season. Yeah, those are some of the big questions questions this season of those three who comes back and who's able to produce I think I have a lot of confidence in Walker Bueller at some point as early as April as early as the end of this month after he makes three more starts at the minor league level Clayton Kershaw has been thrown on flat ground he's someone that has not had any setbacks he's in good spirits he's with the team so I feel good about that Dustin Mays the big wild card though and we haven't heard too much information about that I'm at the moment trying to get more information about Dustin May and how he's looking in his road to recovery but yeah that really is the big one right there because where do you place all those guys if everyone's healthy right I mean it's a good problem to have it's an embarrassment of pitches but I think that the Dodgers have learned from the past that you can never have enough starting pitching like I always said Aristotle once said you can never have enough starting pitching can never have enough pitching in general and I think that's a a perfect example with that we got to the bottom of the lineup got a lot of good contact they just got unlucky with placement and the Cubs play good defense that's from deep fried beans yeah I think the contact has been a lot better from James Allen and Alman did have a double today. So he has started to really hit the ball better, see the ball better. You're seeing harder contact, louder outs. But the results need to be there at some point. And you're seeing the bottom of that lineup with with, uh, with Outman, Lux, and Taylor and guys like that just not being able to give the boost that the top of this lineup needs to really put this entire puzzle to the P, the, to be the last puzzle to it, right? Last piece of the puzzle, so to speak. So I'm a little sick, guys. But yeah, I think for, uh, for Gavin Lux, you just you were hoping that that double would kind of set him off right a couple days ago, but he's still just not looking entirely comfortable at the plate. I think for him, he needs to find his pitches and be aggressive and not worry about the strikeout numbers or anything like that because he's not striking out a ton, right? But he's also just not going out there and being aggressive in certain counts, and I think that's what you want to see. Just let it rip if you're Gavin Lux, right? Uh, we got... Some more comments here. Cubs are not that good. We should have beat that. from Paul. Justin James, strikeout man, and Gavin sucks. Okay, that's a little much there. Uh, That's a finish him. 110.2 mile per hour. We need 68 mile per hour hits. Finding grass. That's from Chief. Yeah, give me hits no matter how how they come, right? A Moose 1032, the bottom three in the lineup, all hitting below 200. Yeah, Moose, I mean, there's no way to sugarcoat it, right? It's like uh, you are what you are, and your numbers are what you say you are. And right now, they're not good for the bottom of the lineup as a whole, but still extremely early, just 10 games into a 162-game season. Reverend 
says, I'm in Ireland. I never get to see this. You're the best, man. Oh, appreciate you over on Ireland. Hey, we're going to do some more afternoon shows all throughout the year. Well, yeah, check for the postgame show all throughout the year, guys. We're going to try to do at least 100 shows, if not more. Out We got the Tuskers should bat after Smith. That's from Steven on YouTube. Rebecca Michelle David agreed Muncie is better at walks and bombs. Tuskers to five. Uh, Lux and Outman struggling. That's from Mike M. Max needs to go from Tyler. Jeff Dix, our bats are on fire this season, just wasn't out today. It's game 10, people. Relax. Yeah, look, we're kind of in the overreaction business on a postgame show, but good way to put it into context is, yeah, you're 7-3 and three after 10. You almost came back and won a game where your starter went an inning in two-thirds, wasn't able to get out of the second. Use Lux and Arise and Scott trade. If the Marlins continue to be trash, they might consider trading them. Think about Arise. I mean, he's got to a really slow start. The Dodgers don't kind of love that style of hitter. I mean, I think that they're fine with the offense. I think for them it's uh, more of uh, can you bolster the bullpen, possibly. Agreed, DMAC Robohas at shortstops from Michael McCaffrey. Send Grove to China, Michael Korea. That's a little harsh. Uh, Maddie Man Dodge, that's why this channel is so much better than the other one. Do you, thanks, Maddie Man, appreciate you. But uh, I, I love everyone in the Dodger game, man. Shout out to everyone doing it. So it's all love for me, man. I think for this one, I like to keep your comments on the screen so you guys can be heard no matter what. You can have conversations throughout the show. It's always really, really important to me because, like I said, this is your show. I'm just hosting it. But uh, not worried about Max Lux, Alvin, and Taylor. Worried. Uh, yeah, Teo should be in the five hole while he's still got a hot bat. He's proven something, man. He really is. And, I mean, geez, he was a half step, half step from making a bases loaded situation there for James Altman late in that game. But CT3, not good right now, but he's clutch in the postseason. Alex, yeah, I'm not selling my Chris Taylor stock. I think for him it's been tough because, I mean, with the additions of of a Teoscar Hernandez and some of these other moves that are made, he's not someone that had a starting role. And usually for Chris Taylor, it's not about coming into the season, starting out of position. It's when does this player go down and Chris Taylor slides in and starts for him, right? And I think, look, maybe if Outman starts struggling a little more and he doesn't turn around, and you could see Chris Taylor get some more opportunities in center, right? I mean, we'll see what happens with Jason Hayward, how quickly he's able to come back. But this is just how it always happens with Chris Taylor. He finds a way to get his at-bats. He'll start going on a tear. There'll be a month stretch where he looks like he's the best hitter in baseball, and then there'll be a month stretch where he looks like he is one of the worst hitters in baseball. He's just extremely streaky. If you know Chris Taylor, that's his game. And the beautiful thing is you just hope that he is peaking and gets hot at the right time like he did in the 2021 postseason, right? Where he had a three homer game where he went absolutely bonkers, hit the walk off against the Cardinals. So you can't sell your stock on someone like Chris Taylor. I'm telling you, there's not a lot of guys like that that are built. I've talked to Chris Taylor about this, and he tells me there's a big difference, and he can sense it. He can sense it from other players in the postseason. When you're in a postseason game and the lights are bright, he can sense the guys that want it and the guys that don't. He can sense that because he's a guy that wants it and has performed in those situations so let's not forget that and how valuable he can be for this team dude our I, I like this michael says dude our il is an all-star lineup that's from michael deep fried beans good thing you aren't managing the dodgers alberto z and i'm sure what alberto z said but like i said all takes are acceptable here guys this is not an echo chamber this is a safe space for you to get out all your dodger takes hey dmac feeling like crap today health wise but i'm glad i got to catch you live hey the band the band geek 014 i myself am not at 100 percent and we're going to get through this and uh, hope you feel better. Hopefully the Dodgers will make you feel better tomorrow with a nice Saturday win. Nothing like a Saturday win at Wrigley Field, but get well soon, my man. Bonnie B, I have more confidence in Taylor than Outman. Jeff Dix, Bobby will be fine. I think the thing with Outman is like, look, his, uh, his defense is still solid in center. His bat, the strikeout rate is high, but you're starting to see a harder contact. You're starting to see some extra base hits. But Chris Taylor 
it's not like he has anything to prove, right? It's not like he's trying to be something he's not. He's accepted his role as a super utility man. He knows what he is. He signed a four-year, $60 million contract for that reason. James Altman, on the other hand, is still in the process of fully cementing himself in his role as a big leader. Does he have the talent to do that? Absolutely. Does he have the skill level? Absolutely. But if we're being completely 100% honest, it's still a process to where you say, okay, he's sewn up that position, right? He's sewn up that position. He can avoid the cold spells. He can avoid the the James Droughtmans enough, right, to where you say, okay, he's going to be able to do that. I have all the confidence in the world that James Altman can do that because he's a hard worker. He is someone that makes adjustments. No one wants it more than him. And look, he's strong. He's athletic. He has the tools to get it done. It just, look, hitting big league pitching is as difficult as anything in professional sports. So it's just not easy, and it's still a work in progress. Let's not forget, the young guys on this team are still young and inexperienced. The James Outmans, the Bobby Millers, the the Gavin Stones. It's just you want to fast track it, and you want them to be further ahead just because of how win now this team is and the collection of talent around them. Just truly cemented first ballot Hall of Famers and the Mookies and the Otanis, the Freddie Freemans and guys like that. So I think that's important to remember that there's a big disparity of experienced players and young guys still trying to find their footing long term. The Gavin Lux is the world, too. You got to mention that one as well. But dang, that's unfortunate. What happened to Tony Gonsolin? Any news on that? Uh, We need the bazooka. 7.6 runs and losses. That tells you that the pen is the problem. Look, the bullpen is makeshift right now, right? They're patching this thing together. I mean, it's like, you know, it's like leftovers, right? After Thanksgiving. You're just putting that plate together. Whatever you got in the fridge, and throw on some turkey, throw on some sweet potato, throw on some cranberry. Whatever you got that's ready, we're going to eat that, right? It's not the fully formed recipe right now with all the ingredients that you're expecting. Look, Bruce Dark Gratterall was the Dodgers best reliever along with Evan Phillips and Ryan Brazier. Brazier's got off to a little bit of a slow start. Evan Phillips has looked the part so far. Blake Trinan was someone that they thought was going to contribute. He's been injured, but uh, DMAC underscore LA, Dodger special advisor, Charlie Lee. I like that. I accept that role for sure. <laughs> and uh, I'll take all your takes, guys, and I'll just slide them in for you. So I'll be a little conduit for this show. Three weakest links in the batting order. That's from Mark. Better late than ever. Diane Schroeder. Give it up for Diane Schroeder. The Dodgers Nation fairy godmother always represent we appreciate that danny court says says i'm late work is dumb you know the rules boss is over there i don't care what meetings are happening what presentations if the dodgers nation post game show or dodger dugouts live is your employee gets to take a 30 to an hour break it's good for their production for their productivity i'm telling you um should have gone down uh, should have gone after Tim. Down goes Anderson for shortstop. I'm, I'm pretty sure he'll be available, but it's interesting. Uh, Moose, Doug, why is Hurt in AAA and Grove is eating innings for us? So, the thing about Kyle Hurt, I think it was a vote of confidence for him in that they realized that if you're going to burn that option, right, that he has the option here and you can send him up and down five times, right? If you're going to send him, use one of those this early in the season, that tells me that they think that he's going to be a big factor in their bullpen later. So, that tells me that, okay. He's going to go down and get his opportunities, and then when he's back up, it's going to be for a longer stretch. So that is my hope because Kyle Hurt is just a better pitcher right now than Michael Grove. His stuff plays better at the big league level. He can work in the zone and have success. Michael Grove is a lot of nibbling, a lot of non-competitive pitches. Kyle Hurt, change up in the zone. Fastball, multiple planes. Different shapes to sliders. I mean, this is someone that has the stuff to get it done at this level and can do it for multiple innings, which is very, very valuable as well. Hey, DMAC, it's by Coastal Lori watching live at a decent hour from D.C. Go Dodger Blue. I'm happy for all your East Coast fans right here. I'm happy for the international fans. You got an afternoon show. So anytime I have an opportunity to do one of these, trust me, I will do it just so you guys can watch the show live because I appreciate you rocking with us all over the globe uh, i love your shows from art illustrator appreciate you grove is the t prince 
uh, the Torian Prince of the Lakers. He will pitch. That's from Craig Osterbury. A little crossover there. Appreciate that. Paul Hernandez. Love the post game. Great job. Thanks, Paul. Do you think the Rams will win the Super Bowl this year? Uh, I'm not so sure, but I hope they do. That'd be cool. Um, Moose, you're the best, Doug. I miss your post game shows on the Periscope in the old days. Good time. Yeah, Moose, you've been rocking with us for a long time. I can't tell how much I appreciate that. When is Adamus available? That's from Zoo by Din. Well, I think for all these teams, the Marlins, the Brewers, it's once you hit that season, once you hit that season starting and opening day comes around, you're going to sit on that for a little bit and try to see how good your team can be. Well, we know the Marlins, they're the worst team in Major League Baseball. The Marlins, they're currently seeing at 0-8. On the flip side, the Brewers, they're 4-1. And And who's the top of that division? You got the Pirates, you got the Cubs, you got the Reds and the Cardinals. Let's let them that division, the NL Central, let's let that percolate a little bit. Let's let that division marinate a little bit and let's see, hey, you don't have Corbin Burns anymore, right? Now, you went out there and you made some moves, right? And got Reese Hoskins, you still have some pieces, no doubt about it, but something tells me that division is going to be a little more competitive than most people realized. And I think a couple months go by, hopefully the Brewers, third or fourth place, then they're going to be trading Willie Dom because he's under one more year of team control. That contract is expiring. He's going to be a free agent at the end of the season. So never forget, you root for three teams right now. You root for the Dodgers. You're for the Dodgers, you're for whoever's playing the Giants, whoever's playing the D-backs, whoever's playing the Padres, and then you root for who's ever playing the Brewers and the Marlins because they got some pieces that we absolutely will be interested in acquiring for this team. So definitely consider that. So it's not going to be right now, but they got to a good start. And I think uh, that division is going to be more competitive than you realize. Trade Gavin Stone from G-Rob. Well, why would you want to do that? First of all, everyone's open for business to me, save for a few players. I wouldn't be completely opposed to Gavin Stone if it was for someone like a, I don't know, Jesus Luzardo type, right? Someone that was a big-time impact pitcher that's under multiple years of team control. But... Gavin Stone looks really, really good. He's a different pitcher since he's just expanded that repertoire with that sinker, with that cutter. It goes east-west, and he still has the devastating changeup, locating the four-seam fastball more. So he's taking a big leap, so for sure. A couple more here, guys. Nice take on Altman. That is from Matthew. What up, Matthew? What up, Denny? Denny says, Bobby Ice was melting down in front of family. Too much pressure on himself, and the wind didn't help. Denny, I like what you did right there. Look, I stand with Bobby Miller. The weather didn't help, I agree. A little pressure today. And I think that for me, it's kind of focus on what you saw in the first inning, right? And I always look at for young players. You got the the flashes, right? Do you have the the signs of solid and do you have the glimpses of greatness? That's why I say you have a glimpse of greatness there in the first inning with the dominant, dominant stuff, striking out the side. And then the second inning, you had a guy that was forcing in the zone, struggling with the command a little bit, and uh, he looked like a pitcher that was in his 25th start, right? So I'd be stroking. What up, my man? Appreciate that. Smash that like button on your way out, guys, by the way. A couple more here, and then we're going to let you guys enjoy the rest of your Friday afternoon. What are you guys doing? this weekend watching Dodger baseball you guys watching that uh, Iowa game I know people are excited about that got the final four got the Lakers only five games left but uh, Danny Cortez security at the stadium sucks okay you talking about that um we got Kevin Muncy on pace to strike out 200 plus times this year yeah I mean he was missing fastballs right in the zone pitches that he really needs to do damage to over for the runners in scoring position but a couple more here guys but that is going to do it for this episode of the Dodgers Nation post game show my name is Doug McCain you can follow me on X and Instagram at DMAC underscore LA couple walk off shots I wish Miller still had some more time on the mound today we got such a shame we got uh, Cole I'll wait a season of Miller pitching and not hang my hat on one game that's the mindset the mentality for sure Mitchell Hopkins my Wife left for L.A. a month ago. What up, Mitch Hopkins? See a Dodgers fan. We got uh, always killing the game over there. But thanks again, guys. Like I said, if you haven't yet, subscribe to the number one Dodgers YouTube channel and comment done down below so you're eligible for our next giveaway at 90,000 subscribers. It's the easiest thing in the world. Easiest thing. You comment done and comment Mookie, too, because it's a Mookie jersey. Give your takes. I'll read all your takes. And then... 
you get to win a jersey. We've done tons of giveaways. We're going to do tons more. But uh, thanks for joining us here on an afternoon edition of the Dodgers Nation post game show. Like I said, my name is Doug McCain. You can follow me on X and Instagram at DMAC underscore LA. Remember, nothing brings us together quite like Dodger baseball. And until next time, think blue.